The Age of Heroes is coming on October 17th, bringing with it new companions and living settlements. Many players will be looking to expand their bases, rebuild, relocate, or start fresh to suit the new crafting thrall AI behavior. I've made a video covering the details of the update, which I'll link in the video description. In this video, I'll show you some amazing base locations on the Exard lands to give new and returning players some ideas. We'll consider resources, nearby NPC camps and dungeons, buildable space and transportation. There should be something for everyone. If you're playing on a server with others, and especially if you're returning to play on officials, make sure to check the server rules before building as they've changed in the last few years. Let's get started. The Sinkhole, H6. The first location is fantastic for players who want to live somewhere central. The Sinkhole boasts a lot of space for a desert base, with large Darfari NPC camp the summoning place close by. There's a spider boss nearby, Sinus Refuge for a short run or ride away, and the Savannah for endless animal hides. But the biggest draw of this location is the Obelisk, allowing players to easily teleport home from anywhere on the map using a map room, learnable from the Archivist in the unnamed city. New players on populated PvE servers will generally find open map rooms placed by other players, so building near an Obelisk wherever on the map can be a great idea. If you like to keep a little distance from other players and build high, there's a nice plateau overlooking the area here. If you want a large flat area to build a castle and keep building costs down, you can't really beat this location outside the unnamed city in C7. This location is right next to the unnamed city, which is a great place to farm legendary weapons and armor, fragments of power, and level your thralls by fighting the skeletons. There's an obelisk inside the unnamed city, and one just up the slope at Shattered Springs, making it easy to return home using a map room. Very close to the Warmaker Sanctuary and Wine Cellar Dungeon, Shattered Springs for Brimstone, and the bustling city of Relic Hunters, Sepamaru, is just a short run away. Sepamaru is a fantastic place to get crafting thralls and early game loot from boxes on the rooftops. For players who want to be closer to Sepamaru, this plateau at Ironbreaker Ridge just up the hill has an amazing view, and there's another buildable plateau over the way if this popular spot is taken. This place is called Ironbreaker Ridge for a reason. Just below us is one of my favourite places to harvest a huge amount of rock and iron, making it an efficient place to find resources for your new builds. For players looking for somewhere to build a winter village or castle, this location in C12 boasts the most incredible views. Unlike the neighbouring areas, this spot should never get hit by meteors, as the falling stars come over the top of this ridge and miss this area. With the frosty temperatures and tough wolves, saber-tooths and mammoths, this area is not suitable for a starter base, unless you're a really experienced player with some cold protection, good weapons and a mount. The area is very cold, and the lake gets extremely cold, so wrap up warm before checking it out. If you do decide to build anywhere else nearby, expect meteors to blast holes in your build. You have been warned. The second snowy location is where I built a tavern during the Age of War. D1112 is very picturesque, not usually overbuilt, a short trip to the volcano, an obelisk, and isn't far from northern NPC camp New Azagarth. The volcano is a great place to find crafting thralls, high-level fighters, and the volcano dungeon, which can be found in the Well of Skelos. New players beware though, the volcano is extremely hot. Roaming NPCs hit extremely hard and are now all set to attack players on site. Consider saving a visit for when you hit level 60. Take heavy armor, ice, and a powerful ally. This third and final snowy location is Ice Spire Chasm in 11G, which is close to another entrance to the volcano, Blackkeep Dungeon, Sabertooth Tigers, and huge rock noses. This location is not for the faint of heart, but is a stunning location to build, with the snowy rocks forming several islands players can build on and across. For players looking to build in the water, whether it's for aesthetics or defense, the Great Dam is a great place to build. With deep waters and a lot of space, you're unlikely to have neighbors interfering with your land claim. This location is right next to several small Nordheimer camps, and New Azagarth is just over the hill. This location is also close to the Bat Caves and Binyakin Seal, where players can fight creatures for legendary tools. Due to the high level NPCs, this location is pretty tough, so make sure to put down a bedroll before engaging in a fight. This is G10 in the Highlands. For new players looking for a water location that feels like paradise, this location on Noob River in E4 is perfect. With the gorgeous music of this biome, ambient sounds and excellent weather, this location is very peaceful outside the occasional sandstorm. This location is right next door to Skulker's End, a great early NPC camp filled with Darfaris. Players can find a range of crafters and sorcerers here. At the end of the NPC camp through the door, you can find the Dreg's dungeon with bosses and legendary chests to get your first legendary weapons. Above the dungeon is the blue obelisk, so players can teleport home with ease. For mid-level players looking for somewhere fairly central, this gorgeous oasis next to Muriela's Hope in E8 is fantastic for a base with a swimming pool or small bathhouse. Be careful though, 
the rhino boss is mean. This location is right next to the Dogs of the Desert NPC camp, the Den, with great crafting thralls, loot chests, and NPCs selling pets, including Ulrich Master Tamer, who sells camels. Players can find the entrance to the Midnight Grove dungeon next door, the unnamed city is close by, and the highlands can be accessed by climbing this cliff or adding a lift. The jungle. This biome is full of so many sprawling locations to build, it was hard to narrow down the list. These are some of my favorites. We'll start with the largest, flattest area on this list in the jungle in N7. This location has a large, flat area up high, overlooking Buccaneer Bay, a large NPC camp full of useful crafter thralls, and vendors selling exotic pets. There are iron nodes dotted around, and players can get thick hides from the nearby gorillas. One of the best things about this location is it isn't far from one of the two jungle obelisks, making this a great location with a lot of space to build if you don't mind the rain. This location in K9 is great for players looking to live like Shrek in the swamp and have a quick way to return home. Here we're right next to the Northern Jungle Obelisk, located at the upper staging area, and right by the passage, a mini dungeon that players can use to pass through to the snowy north. Expect to do some climbing to take that route. If you're deathly scared of bugs and spiders, this location is best avoided, but the creatures in this area can be harvested for Ica, Gossamer and Chitin, and there's lots of trees and rocks nearby for building. There's also a lot of cool trees if you want to experiment with building tree houses. If, like me, you want the coziness of being closer to NPCs, this spot in M6 is much better, overlooking Descent of Dagon, an NPC camp full of pirates and some heroic treasure. There's lots of buildable space up high, iron nodes galore and cats. A lot of cats below. You're also not far from the Southern Jungle Obelisk and large NPC camp at Buccaneer Bay. Okay, so this location is one of my absolute favourites on the Exard lands. Here at 05, players will be near to the new content in the Age of Heroes, companion Lu Fei will be on your doorstep, which will be handy for returning to him after completing his quest lines. I've checked on the beta and this location is still buildable in the Age of Heroes. I love this location because you can build a gate here in this opening and build on this stone platform. You can build on both sides and are close to the Lemurian NPC camp, the Pagoda of Boundless Lusts. Across the water is the island of unsightly sirens with dancers and a cook, Buccaneer Bay is along the coast, and on the shore nearby is access to level 60 Dagon Dungeon, accessible by clicking on this boat. Okay, enough soggy jungle. Let's move somewhere warmer for the next locations. The Volcano Hideaway. You can build in a lot of areas in the volcano. This biome has a lot of high-level fighters and crafters, but its heat will bring certain death for the unprepared, and is not suitable for a starter base. My first favourite location is here in this building across the bridge of Vormithadrith in G13. Inside, there are boxes with obsidian tools, gold and silver, which should respawn if you leave a gap in your foundations, and it's close to the obelisk. The ground beneath the buildings is buildable, so you can place a wheel there, or nearby on the terrace of the tenders. This similar spot in G14 is right next to the volcano obelisk, an entrance to the volcano, and the path to the Well of Skelos, the volcano dungeon. I found an obsidian pick and a star metal pickaxe in this box, and there's a friend here too. One drawback is you can't build all the way up to the front of this section, but you can build across the lava and put a lift or stairs up to your hideaway. The Highlands is full of sprawling green pastures and mid to high level enemies. If you want a cozy little nook with a great view of the Highlands, NPCs on your doorstep, easy access to the desert and a large NPC camp, the Black Galleon, this little spot on the cliff is perfect, especially once you've unlocked elevators at level 19. This little NPC camp has a sorcerer and the chance to spawn named Blacksmith, Armourer, Smelter, Performer, Cook, Tanner, and Carpenter. The Black Galleon and nearby camps have the chance to spawn those crafters and has four bearer spawns. There's iron nearby, along with boars for food, water, rocks, and trees for crafting. And there's world bosses on your doorstep. If you're looking for a location with more space, this area just further into the highlands on and around Telet Island in H8 is great. Overlooking the aqueduct right next to a pathway to the desert and savannah, this spot in G8 has a great view and there's a quick route to the desert and savannah nearby to our left. If you want to be near the second companion added in the Age of Heroes, Freya, this ridge overlooking her spawn point in H9 has a lot of space. Plenty of iron to get you started, wood, stone, and goats for food. It's also right next to the Bat Caves for legendary tools, weapons, black blood, and feathers, and not far from New Azagarth. My final suggestion in the Highlands is an incredible source of metal, stones, wood, and right near an awesome NPC camp, as well as boasting some fantastic views and a nearby obelisk. You can run or ride up to God's Claw Passage in E10 at any stage of the game, but I suggest you wear armor, have some heals, and a decent amount of health to ride across the freezing bridge of the Betrayer, which is how you'll quickly teleport home to this location. 
If you build too close to this metal, you'll block off its spawn, worth being aware of. But this spot is so densely rich in resources, it's been a favorite of mine for years. If you want more flat space, there's also this side, order of nine and 10 D and E. If you've never summoned a purge to your base, check out my purge guide linked in the description. In that video, I show you this fantastic purge location in I6. This remains my favorite place to spawn a purge on the Exard lands, because the purge will always come from the same direction, making it easier to plan your defenses. If you place foundations up here, the purge will always spawn down the bottom of the slope. It's also right next to the Black Galleon NPC camp, where there are a bunch of NPCs and heroic treasure to fill your coffer. Mount of the Dead is an NPC camp with some of the most ferocious fighters and incredible crafters, including a shield right armorer work of the last tribe and bladesmith blacksmith Volfellis the Hammer. That makes visiting here often a great use of your time. My favorite place to build here is by this little NPC camp, Stargazer's Crest in C11. This spot here boasts a huge amount of iron nearby, trees, rocks, fiber for crafting, and meteors will fall on the slopes behind you. There's black metal and ice on the ridges behind us too. Just make sure to wrap up warm or bring some warming food before heading up the slopes. The place you want to be close to big cats and rhinos, world bosses and sunshine, Crown Grove is ideal. It's not far from Mounds of the Dead and Sepaburu. It's right next to Shattered Springs for Brimstone, close to an obelisk, and the Warmaker Sanctuary is nearby, a legendary weapon farming when you hit level 60. This plateau on the border of 9B and C is great, but there's loads of space to build in this area, so it's worth looking around. The last on this list is for the reclusive exile, looking for somewhere to escape the hustle and bustle of the map. Deserter's Gutter on the border of 8 and 9D is one of many points of interest with very limited access to other players. It's very close to the Highlands, has its own supply of iron nearby, isn't far from the Den NPC camp, and access to the Midnight Grove dungeon. After learning sorcery and leveling up magic, players can craft teleportry stones, which opens up the map for higher level players later on, and reduces reliance on map rooms or mounts. There are so many amazing places to build on the Exiled Lands, it'd be impossible to fit them all in one video. But I hope this has given you some ideas. Let me know where are your favorite base locations in the comments. And if you're new to the game, which one did you like the most from this list? Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. I want to say a big thank you to our channel members. If you'd like to become a member, hit the join button under this video. You can find me live streaming the Age of Heroes when it begins on October 17th on my Twitch channel. Make sure to follow me over there too. Thanks for watching. See you soon.